Hello everyone, I hope this video finds you well. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Monday, so I thought I'd start afresh. My desk isn't tidy, so it's not much of a fresh, but I thought we'd start with a new project. Um, sort of have an idea in my head, uh, so we'll have a play. So I've got a piece of Pink Frog Smooth Card 300 GSM, and it's four and a half by six and a half and what I'm going to do now I've lost it is you, you've seen me on many videos have these templates that I've cut out of circles so I'm going to use one of these templates I will measure because I know some of you like to know the size just bear with me don't ask me why I didn't get the tape measure out first but there's always something Right, so this is um, almost three and a half inches across. Not quite, not quite. Yeah, almost three and a half. But really, I'd just draw around a container. I wouldn't worry too much as long as you've got a circle. Draw around a container, use your circle dies, whatever you've got. So I'm sort of going to place this maybe a little bit up there, around about there, shall we say. Yeah, so I'm going to hold this down with some low tack tape, mainly because I know it will keep moving if I try to add some colour through there so I'm just going to be a little bit patient and just add some low tack tape now you can create your own template out of a piece of card you can even cut a piece of card four and a half inches by six and a half inches cut the circle out of it and you can place it exactly where you want I'm using these templates because I've already got these templates so I'm going to use them so I'm just masking off this little bit of an area here just so that I don't end up with ink where I don't want it. So I'm just using low tack tape. It's actually a narrow one. I've normally got a wider one than this, but hey ho, I'm using what I've got. Let's just turn that over because it drives me mad when I can't find the end up. And my husband always forgets to do that and I spend 20 minutes trying to find the end. Oh, I can't be doing with that. Right, so I'm going to be using peak. <laughs> I'm making up my own words. I'm going to be using cracked pistachio. So we'll do that first. And as you can see, my brush is really clean. It's been lying against something that's got red on it. So I'm going to take my brush. And these were just makeup brushes. So I'm just going to take the brush. And when you use a brush, obviously you can use... It sort of lays down the colour a little bit gentler, a little bit softer. So if you want to go in nice and lightly and build up your colour, the brushes are a good way to go because you can just gently build up that colour and it sort of gives a nice sort of blended look. If you want something that lays down colour richer and thicker, sometimes for different techniques, then the cut and dry foam or a sponge is good or your ink blending tools. So I'm just using the brush. I'm sorry, I can't hold them down here. I know some people hold them down here. I can't be doing with this wobble here. Oh, I have to hold it down there. A good firm hold. Right, so I'm going to just continue blending that colour. Just going around the circle. There we go. So then I'm going, let's see if I can make this name up. I'm going to use Salty Ocean. So I've got a brush for my salty ocean. The other reason I've taped this down is I don't have to hold the card in place and it doesn't move. So I'm just going to use the salty ocean. And again, because I'm using a brush, I can lay down that colour very gently. You can still, and the oxides are very forgiving. You can blend the colours really nicely because it's got that pigment diffusion and because of that pigment element, they blend really nicely. 
So let's just add a little bit more blue. So it's a little bit bluey, just in places. And then what we'll do is we'll pick up a little bit more of the cracked pistachio, and then we'll just blend out the edges with that cracked pistachio. So don't you have to apply a couple of layers because you want to be sure that you've got those layers on there and it just blends out when you use the lighter colour. I'm then going to go in with touches of wilted violet and again I've got a brush. I'm sure my brushes are just getting bigger. So I've got some of the wilted violet and I'm just going to add little bits of the wilted violet and at first when you apply the colour it does look like you're not applying anything but just just be patient and build up the colour sort of nice and slowly and you can go in and if you if you sort of apply the layers gently and slowly you can easily add more if it's not quite what you're looking for you can't take it away although you could add water with the distress oxides and sort of bleach it out a little bit so let's add a little bit more purple there there we go and what i'm going to do then is take the cracked pistachio once again and then i'm going to blend those colors out just so that that cracked pistachio is definitely there in the centre and it just blends out the colours just so that you've got a nice sort of blended look. So let's remove those ink pads. I don't know where I'm going to remove them to but let's move the brushes. It's just better if I can move them out of the way because I can see what I'm doing then. So we can remove our low tack tape and you can tell Tracy doesn't know which piece she added first. And you can reuse your low tack tape if you wish. So then we've got a lovely circle there and it's beautifully blended. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to take my Hellebore stamp and I'm going to use this image here. So Hellebore 1063. I'll add my affiliate link to the description to the All and Create shop. So look at the state of that. That's had tape or something on it. The problem is mine were used for workshops and they do get in a mess. Well, maybe you should clean them, Tracy. How disgusting is that? Right, so we'll just use the Versafine Clay. So we'll ink the floral up. Give that a really good inking you're going to stamp a little bit over this so give that a really good inking don't sort of scrimp on your inking i know sometimes we're in a little bit of a, a rush and we we don't ink enough so a nice tapping motion And then I'm going to spend a little bit of time just judging where I want this. So just take your time. So I think I want it, mm, yep, around about there. There we go. So we'll just allow that ink just to sit on there. Just give that time just to sit. You need to give it time for the Versafine Clair to absorb into this inky area here. Always keep two, some fingers on your acrylic block. If you move all the fingers off your acrylic block, you're going to get rock. So just leave those fingers in place as you press different areas of that stamp. So just good, even pressure, good habits to get into. And then I've got the All and Create acrylic blocks, which I can leave it and just bend slightly just to get a beautiful image. Just beautiful. 
So you just need to give that time to dry, but we will blot that. So let's grab a little bit of copy paper. And we're just going to blot the image, mainly because one, you've stamped onto this oxide area here. So that is no lot. The card is less absorbent because you've got that ink on there. So it just sits on the top. So we'll just blot that image a little bit. And look at the difference. So this area here is where it went straight onto the card. This area here is where it went onto the Distress Oxide. And that's why you need to blot. So just give that a blot again. So here, on this side here, is where the oxide ink is. And if you lift that up, look at what you get. And it's important that I show you this. So can you see? It's only where the oxide ink is. That's because this has got the layers on the top of the card and the black, unlike this, is not absorbed into the card. It's sitting on the top of that oxide layer. So let me just grab my heat tool. Now, you don't really have to dry. You can just blot it a few times and that's fine. But I'll just show you. So we'll just give this a little bit of a dry. Now I'm going to heat the heat tool up because there's no point me sitting there wafting it against the card when it's not warmed up. Let's just allow this to warm up. There we go. And we'll just give this area a little bit of a dry. There we go. So you've seen that I've not dried much. So let's just bend that card a little bit. So you can see that's where it's been on the oxide ink. So let's go, let's take, let's turn the paper over to the bottom so we can see. And let's now blot the ink. Turn it over so you can see I'm not cheating. There's no ink there. So I've also, let me just bring you this one in. I've did one before I went to the video that I just left on one side and it's been done about 10 minutes. So let's see if that ink dried on its own. So we'll use, let's use a clean area and let's blot this. And let's pick that up. Look, if you wait 10 minutes, that will dry anyway. There's nothing on there. So I like to show you and give you a full... So that's been sitting there for 10 minutes and it's dried. So you can do it that way and let it dry naturally. Or if you're impatient, blot it. The reason you blot it is if you're going to work on this card straight away, if you don't blot it and dry it, what you're going to do is smudge it with your hand. That's why you blot or maybe dry with your heat tool. The choice is yours. It's, it's important. I give you plenty of choices. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my Tree of Life stamp, stamp set 626, and I'm going to take the little tree. It's not so little, really. Let's take the tree. There we go. And can we get away with an A7? Should be able to. Now, what I need to do is ink up more of the tree than I actually need, because then I won't miss any bits. So I'm inking the whole tree. You can put a piece of copy of paper on your non-stick craft sheet if you wish. So I'm going to... And I'm not going to use second generation, so I'm just going to ink that up again. So just take the tree again. There we go. Now have I got enough? Do I want one more? We'll have one more little bit. And you can see each time 
I always ink up more of the stamp than I actually need. Mainly because if you ink up less and then you end up using more of the stamp, you'll end up with a, a bit that's not inked. So we'll just leave that there. So this ink here, it's been stamped straight away. How can I find a clean area on this paper? It's been stamped straight away onto card that is absorbent. But if you get into a habit, not much, nothing's come off there, but if you get into the habit of blotting, it just stops you from smudging everything. Did help if I got a pen. Hopefully this Micron pen is working. So I'm going to use my Micron pen I'm just going to just create my bauble here. Now there are plenty of bauble cards around, which have been around for years. Everybody's doing bauble cards. I've done the one where you ink a container and create a circle and create a bauble from that. I've done that as well many years ago. But there's lots of bauble cards around for you to take inspiration from. So I've got my little bauble on there. Really should let that dry before I try and do gel pen. But you know I'm not going to let it dry, don't you? You knew that anyway, didn't you? So I'm just going to... Just add a little white touch there, just so that you can you can see that. So what I'm going to do then is let's just take a little bit of kitchen roll. So we'll just take a little bit, little bit of kitchen roll. Then I'm going to get my water brush that is broken but I'm just using it for the brush. I'm just going to make sure that's clean because I'm positive I used grey on there and if you've used grey it'll just dull your colour down. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've just dipped that into water and I'm just going to take the excess water off on there and what I'm going to do is just wet. Use a little bit of water just on here just on the floral here, where I've used the oxide ink. Just to... Now, use some clean water because you're going to pick up this colour, which you can't see, so I'll do it down here. So if I go into this water now, it'll go a little bit green. So let's just... Take some of that colour out and you'll see why. There we go. And then if we just dab, you can see that it removes some of that colour. Now, I'm not leaving it like that. You can leave it so that you've got the white. I'm going to show you different ways of doing things. Now, you will not be able to do this technique if one, your card is not good quality cardstock that allows you to do the water techniques. And it also won't work if you haven't added layers and layers of ink. If you haven't added layers and layers of ink, it won't work. So, just so you can see what we've got so far. Now you could leave it like that, no problem at all. But what I'm going to do is add a little bit of colour. So you've got this little bit of purple in here. So I'm going to add a little bit of purple. So I'm going to use Dusky Purple 0730. Now, really, what you shouldn't do is go in with more moisture. Because what you will do is you'll break down the card fibres. So give that a dry. Because you'll break down those card fibres too much. So just give those a dry. But you can see I've not like completely soaked the back of the card. You 
just want to make sure that you know you get enough moisture so that comes off but you could leave it like that quite easily no problem at all let's just put that down so what was i talking about so i'm going to use my dusky purple which is 0730 and what i'm going to do is gently just add a little bit of the dusky purple now don't go and break your card down too much just add a light scribble that's a professional term light scribble so just add a light scribble and then i'm going to go to a little touch of thistle 0720 just add a little touch of thistle these are my ink tense pencils i do beg your pardon so these are my ink tents and then i'm going to add red violet 0610 i can never read that one as clear as i can read the others but these are all my ink tense pencils but I'm not laying down, I'm not scratching the sit, getting my fingers down here and scratching it. I'm holding my hand a little bit further up and just lightly layering some of that colour. That's all I'm doing. Okay. So we'll then just make sure that our brush is clean because we don't want it, the colour changed with any of the green that we lifted up. So what I'm doing is I've got my water brush, take off the excess moisture for a start. Then I'm going to activate this color. And ink tense pencils will go on any surface. Take off the excess color because you don't, I don't want to add any. So I'm just blending. So if you've got excess colour, just take that off. And I'm hardly using any water. So my brush is slightly wet. It's not soaking wet. You don't want it flooding because it'll just run away with you and you just, you can't blend and get a beautiful blend when you just, when you rush it just so you can see so what i'm going to do then is i'm just going to go back to the red violet now when you're doing this with your ink tense pencils you're picking up the moisture so I'm, I'm loading my brush with water and then i'm going on here and taking off that excess water i'm then going to pick up a tiny bit of this pigment never ever 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 go into this brush with a soaking wet water you just don't want to do that. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit more pigment. I'm going to take off the excess and then I'm just going to blend that out just so it's got a little bit more depth. I'll do the same again, hardly any water and just bring in a little bit more of that color. I've not added more water to the brush I'm just picking up a little bit of that pigment just to add a little bit more vibrancy of the color so I'll take off the excess and again I still didn't go to any more water like so there we go and then wash your brush and if you want a little bit more of the whitish area you can take a bit more color out of the end bits by just using clear water and just take out some more color from the end bits let's just use a clean piece of kitchen roll because you take out some of the color just so that you've got those little 
sort of white halo sort of effect as well. We will add some more white into here as well. So what we'll do is just on the leaves that are on here, we'll take out a little bit of that colour. And if you go to your water, it'll be green now. So you need clean water. If you go in with dirty water, you're just putting that colour back on again. So let's just, it's only where the colour is, you're just removing that colour. So go back in and it will only work if you've added layers of colour and if your card works with this technique. You can even go down the stem a little bit, but just be aware you're removing colour, so you need to make sure that you're using clean water. So a little bit here. So you're sort of bleaching out those areas. Let me show you. Just so you can see those, you're just bleaching out that area. You can use your dry kitchen roll and it'll just to make sure it's all dry. And it just adds a beautiful effect. There we go. So I'm then going to grab, did I not get that one out? No, I didn't. So I'm going to grab my Meander Through Beauty. I think they've changed the, the name now to Meander. And I'm going to use this text stamp. So I just need an A7 block. We'll just use this text stamp. That's it. And I'm just going to use a grey ink pad. So I'm going to use Versafine Claire Morning Mist. I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping and I'm just going to use the first generation with the grey with the morning mist so let's just and I do like this when there's a little bit of text over the floral now you don't have to press very hard I've got a, a gremlin you don't have to press very hard with this text stamp but it just it really does add a little bit see I'm going to take that off the acrylic block because I just want to add a little bit to the bottom that's it let's place this stamp there just so you can see. Now, if I just tilt a little bit, you can see a bit of glossiness here. That is where the ink isn't dry because you've stamped this gray. Let's get some clean card. Now you stamp this gray onto that oxide layer. So just give that a blot and you will see, yes, you can see there, that ink comes off there. So I shall give that a little bit of a dry. You just take your time and just give that a little bit of a dry, just so that you don't end up smudging your beautiful card when you've got it all, all prepared. So I'm then going to, um, where are you? Oh yes, you're still there, that's fine. What I'm going to do is just pick up some water now and I'm just going to lightly flick some of that water just onto my bauble. Now I don't want to sort of add big splatters, so that's why I'm going very gently and just adding these gentle splatters with my water brush. So I'm just 
adding the gentle splatters with that water brush. Now, again, it works better the more layers of ink, as in distress oxide ink, you've added. So let's have a little bit of a clean up. Let's clean that. And you can see it working before your eyes. Let me just let me lift this up. You can see that working before your eyes. That's because I've got a really good layer of oxide inks on there. You saw me go over and over with the oxide inks because I've got a good layer of oxide ink on there. And also I've got a good quality card and card is so vitally important. So just remember that. So I'm just going to take a little bit more water. Always add a little bit at a time. You can take it, you can't take it away, but you can always add. So just be aware of that. And I'd always say, be a little bit patient when you're doing this. Allow it to do its thing. Don't be too quick to dry it or dab it just so that it can do its thing. Just going to take this clean piece of kitchen roll and make sure there's no moisture just down the bottom. And I'm going to take a little bit of my grey ink tense pencil. So let's add a little bit of the grey just here. Okay. So I'm going to make sure that my brush is clean. Use a little bit of water and then take off the excess. And I'm just going to blend this out and what I'm doing is I'm sort of kissing the ink tense pencil not with my lips but with the brush just before you get worried you can again dab that if you wish but just blend out a little bit of that ink tense let's have a little bit here and sort of when I'm when I'm drawing with the grey ink tense, I'm not pressing very hard. I'm just pressing very lightly, just to make sure. I just give that a sort of a light touch. Again, you can dab as much as you wish. We will be adding white splatters as well. So I'm going to grab my gel pen, which of course I've just dumped down. There it is. Now, you saw me add lots of splatters of water, so there's no point me going in with a gel pen because it's going to do nothing because it's on a wet surface. So let's give that a dry. And your ink tense pencils are permanent when dry. There we go. Just bend that car, just show it who's boss. But look how the water reacts beautifully with that. And, and don't be in a rush. When you're making your seasonal makes, you, you should enjoy them. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to lightly, especially if it works, let's grab a little bit of it. That's better. So I'm, I'm lightly touching with my gel pen to add some of the white. Just add a bit of sort of pollen. And I'm adding that just to the area that is coloured. And then what I'm going to do, let's grab a, that piece of copier paper, make sure we've got the clean area. And then I'm just going to add some sort of touches of white to some of the branches, which you won't see much because you're doing white on white, but I will know it's there. Obviously, if you added colour at the top with a little bit of the colour, you'd see the white. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to add colour to here because I want this to really stand proud so where's my 
Now I did pull this out, so I'm going to add a little bird. So I'm going to use my uh, scarecrow. So have I got, where's my circular piece? Let's just move this circular piece, my, sorry, my card out of the way. And let's just grab the same piece of copy of paper that we used to blot all that. And let's draw around this circle. So draw around this circle. And then, did we leave the scissors? No. Let's then cut the inside of that circle. So I'm going to cut on the inside of the circle. Now I've been doing spotlights and like this for nearly 30 years and spotlights are, are now everywhere so you just take inspiration from what for what bit works for you and how it works for you you don't have to do the whole card if that's not your cup of tea you can just take certain bits from the card there's lots of different ideas all over the web that you can take from and develop. So I'm going to take, so you can leave it like that if you wish. So I'm going to add my aperture, which is not exactly the best colored out thing I've seen, cut out thing I've seen. I mean, I could have cut better if I'd got my eyes shut. Right, so I'm going to take my little gate And there's lots of suppliers that've got gates, so whatever you've got, you can use. Don't let's use the grey ink; it's so easy to do. So I'm going to use my gate, and mine's a bit sort of one of them crooked, iddledy piddledy gates that you know is half dilapidated, a bit like me. So all as I want is a little bit of that gate. Now, the reason we cut out of copier paper is if we'd have cut this circle and tried to stamp through the circle that we had on the 300 GSM card, this here would have caused a ridge. And it would have caused a ridge, which would mean that you wouldn't get this gate right on the edge of the circle. It would have left a gap because of that 300 GSM card leaves a ridge because it's thicker whereas the copier paper is thin so you know me i love standing things on the tree so we're going to have we're going to get the scarecrow stamp again and we're going to use the little bird so let's use the little bird and again we're going to stamp that in black now be careful because we haven't blotted that gate So don't lean your hands on the gate. Let's have him sort of there. There we go. So we just add that beard. There we go. Now that ink, that Versafine Claire, is literally sitting on that surface. So we'll get a clean piece of the copier paper again. Now you can let it dry if you want to naturally. But if I get a piece of the copier paper and I just blot that. It'll pick up the first layer of ink, which means less time for drying. Don't need to dry it too long. go make sure your hands are clean let's just tilt that and then what I'm going to do is just add some Posca white pen now if your Posca pen isn't doing anything give that a pump on there and give it a good shake give it a good shake and then pump again 
and then you'll be able to add your splatters quite easily to your project. And you can see that's happening really easily because I've pumped that Posca pen. And yes, you do end up with a, a few little splatters just here and there. I mean, my desk has got more than a few splatters on. Actually, I'm trying to clean up splatters here that have probably been here 20 years. There you go. Just so that you can, you can see that. And then I'm just going to use my gel pen and just add... She says, that's better. Just a few little touches to there. Now, you need to let those splatters just, you need them to dry. Right, so let's grab. So I've got a gold gel pen. So those of you that haven't got glitter, you haven't got gold leaf, so I can use a little bit of gold just dotted around my bauble. Oh, and it, honestly, it works beautifully. I will hold it up for you. Now try to be a little random. Just let me hold that up a bit. There you go. You can see those touches of gold. You can add a few touches of gold to your floral as well, just to give that a little bit of shimmer as well. But don't go overboard, sort of touch very lightly. You can also add a little touch of the gold just to your little branches as well and go in very lightly you don't want to sort of you know big massive bold lines these are little twiggy branches and if I hold that up you can see you've now got some metallic in there I was trying to think of a way you could add it you see if you haven't got gold leaf etc you can use your gold gel pen which works rather nicely and I love how this flower is half in and out. So, and I, I adore hellebores as well. They're just lovely. And it's just that little bit of white taken out works quite nicely. And when this is dry, you can still go in again and remove a little bit of colour. Right, where are we now? I've got that many stamp sets out. I do the same. So I'm just going to see, I've got my season stamp set here, 455. I'm just going to see if I want to use the winter or December. And you can take your acetate, hopefully all these stamps don't fall off, and I can just add my winter. And I've used that many A7 acrylic blocks now. They're just dotted everywhere. Now, I'm not going to ink the stamp up at the moment. I'm just going to have a little, little play around. Think there, because then it doesn't detract from the flow. So I'm going to ink that up with my black ink, my Versafine Claire. Now, make sure your Posca paint pen is completely dry and I don't have to press this really hard I just sit there and allow it to absorb into the card you don't have to press too hard there we go and then where are we going to go now let's where's that winter there we go Now this, let me just check. I'm I've used my grey 
this a fine clay to stamp this so it's the the oh, i always forget the name morning mist i used the gray so what i'm going to do i didn't intend to use the gray i was going to use the black however what i'm going to do is just use my micron pen which actually works quite well because it's not too black so it works quite well for a sort of a christmas card and what i'm going to do is grab my white gel pen and i'm just going to add some light touches of the white just onto it just means it's not quite so harsh just let me show you that it's not quite so harsh and then i'm likely going to add a little bit of ink tense pencil there a lightly bit of ink tense pencil here and then search high and low for the water brush that you've just tucked under everything so i'm just going to ground that floral and you can see i've not added really dark black so you could use a gray ink if you wished if you haven't got the ink tense pencil now the good thing about this is there is no dimension on there so if you wanted to post this out to anybody it's completely flat it is totally flat so that works quite nicely so what you can do then is because you've given the card time to rest i use the same grubby piece of copier paper and you can still go in and take out more colour if you wish. It's entirely up to you. You can still continue to take out more of that colour. And you will see on your kitchen roll you can see the sort of a faded colour but I just love how that looks it just works rather nicely so where's my card I've then got let's just place this is my card blank so I think can you see I don't like when it's my Christmas cards, I don't like um, to have a black mat. I just like it to look fresher for a card. So I just like that starkness of it. If you wanted to add sort of a bit of a blue edge, you can add that blue edge if you wish. I prefer the starkness sort of classy paired back look for my Christmas card that's just me now if you wanted to you can change this say that you want to send this to somebody and you want to add a little bit of dimension um, because you're going to hand it to somebody so you want it to make a look a little bit different so what you can do is you can add dimension on the sentiment you can add dimension on the florals if you want i i really love it like this now the card blank is five and a half by seven and a half so that i've got that nice big gap all right let's just move these out of the way i'm then going to take that gold pen again and i'm now just going to finish off by adding some little sort of gold just around the branches Just try to be sort of random about it you don't want to be too regimented but a gold gel pen works rather nicely now whoever receives this they'll have that shimmy on there now you can take it up a level again by adding some glitter if you wish it's entirely up to you but i'm rather pleased with that rather like that just rather pleased with it 
So I hope you've enjoyed that process. I look forward to seeing your interpretation. Love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.